Hello, folks. Hello, hello. Dr. Ken Berry here. Welcome back. Uh, I'm going to be hanging out with you for the next hour or so. Hey, James in California, I've got my decaf right here. I'm really trying to cut back on the caffeine big time. Not that I necessarily think it's bad. I'm just doing a little personal experiment. Um, all you guys need to experiment with stuff all the time. Try a month with this, a month without that. It, it helps you understand your personal physiology. It's an excellent way to uh, learn where you, where on the, the proper human diet spectrum you fall. Uh, so, hey, guys, how's it going? How's it going? Hey, Amy. Hey, Clifford. Hey, Stella. Evan. Marie. Lori. Jean. Bree. Welcome, guys. I uh, saw a couple of super chats before I went live. Tia said, uh, do you know anyone who has conceived on a carnivore diet who had endometriosis? I don't know of anyone personally, uh, but I do know that eating a carnivore diet or a, a, a ketovore diet is going to get your insulin level back to close to very low normal, which is going to help your other hormones uh, normalize, which is going to calm down your endometriosis symptoms. And in many cases, put it completely in remission, which is going to greatly increase your risk of getting pregundo. So, yeah, if, if you have any problem conceiving, then a, a real food, whole food keto diet. I have to say that now because there's so many uh, companies out there selling keto cookies, cakes, pies and other assorted bullshit. I have to say real whole food, one ingredient keto or ketovore or carnivore, uh, you're going to increase the likelihood of conception. Okay. Uh, yeah. Blackhearted says Kelly Hogan. She had, I think, three kids. She um, she is 100% carnivore all through all three of her pregnancies, through breastfeeding, and all three of her kids uh, started off carnivore. I don't know if they still are. So that was that was number one from Tia. Then from Arlene, uh, Arlene says she's on a carnivore diet for autoimmune conditions. Should I aim for higher fats? The problem is I like leaner cuts, but my kidney and liver function is struggling. So a couple of things here, Arlene. Yeah, I, I personally think you should shoot for higher fat carnivore. I think most people do better on higher fat. And uh, also the protein from a carnivore diet is not going to harm your kidneys or your liver. Eating lots of healthy animal protein is good for your kidneys. It's not bad for your kidneys. Uh, Northern Sportsman says, is it normal to have the shites when starting the carnivore diet? It's not normal, but it does happen, I'd say, to about 20 or 25 percent of people. For the first uh, one to four weeks, they'll have some loose stools until their gut bacteria adjust to the new healthier diet. Uh, that's very it, it's it's common, but it's not normal. Most people don't have that at all. OK. All right, guys. Now, don't forget to remind your mom or your Uncle Elmer if they always want to catch me live and they always forget, send them a text message right now. Send them a direct message or you can just share this video right now on your favorite social media. There's a share button down there. You can click it and share it with everybody you care about. Uh, Princess Bubblegum says, Dr. Barry, is celery powder safe? Uh, seeing it in meat products like deli meat and bacon, apparently it's replacing nitrates. So no, it's not replacing nitrates. It is very high in nitrates. Most people think, that, oh, I don't eat bacon because it's so high in nitrates. But then they'll drink a, a celery juice and, and eat celery and eat uh, beet greens, which are much, much, much higher in nitrates than bacon or uh, any other cured meat. So uh, the celery powder is not replacing nitrates. It is nitrates. Uh, and that just goes to show you that, you know, the vegans telling you to avoid bacon because it's full of nitrates, but then they're going to make, they're going to have a celery juice every day and they're going to have lots of beet greens and celery and they're, they're full of nitrates. So it's like, um, and they're, they're exactly the same molecule. I've posted on Twitter about this before. It's not a different, some kind of weird molecule. Daniel says, hello again, doc update on the proper human diet. Uh, PhD stands for proper human diet. In case any of you newcomers didn't know, I just hit 159 pounds this morning at 11% body fat. Daniel, 
This diet is amazing for athletes. Blood work came back great as well. Excelente. Well done. Well done. Let's see. Splendus says, Dr. Barry, I've been keto carnivore for about 100 days straight. I just got a stomach bug last night. I have been water fasting with keto chow electrolyte drops. Any tips on breaking the fast? So if you've been fasting for, for two or three days, I'd probably just scramble an egg in butter <clears throat> and eat that. Give your give your gastrointestinal system time to wake up and ramp up and get your acids going and then wait about an hour. Then you can just you can go ahead and fully break your fast with a good keto ketovore carnivore meal. Who is this? Dean Miller. Hey, Dean, thanks for the super chat, my friend. Thank you very much. Uh, how many of you guys did not know that celery powder is nitrates? The very nitrates that they tell you to avoid in bacon, that's what celery powder is. That's what, And so anytime you see a bacon in the grocery that says uncured or nitrate free, that's actually a lie. The federal government here in the United States lets them lie about that. They use celery powder, which is full of nitrates, and they cure the bacon with celery powder. And then they say, no nitrates, nitrate-free, uncured. It's a total lie. But our federal government currently lets them do that. Yeah, James, celery powder is, is literally nitrates. Nitrates are not bad for you, by the way. I actually have a whole YouTube video about the nitrates in processed meat. They're not bad for you. Uh, there's actually a couple of drug companies that are studying nitrates, trying to get a patent on them as a blood pressure lowering medication because nitrates in your body, they break down into nitric oxide. Ever heard of that? That's actually a very good thing for you. Uh, we make nitric oxide naturally when we're out in the sun, when the sun hits our skin, but they're wanting to put it in a pill and get a patent on it and probably charge, you know, two or $300 a month because nitric oxide lowers your blood pressure. But a good way to get free nitric oxide is to eat lots of nitrates in, in cured bacon and to get out in the sun a lot. That's how you can get all the nitrates you want for free. Murian, I have had kefir. I, I love the taste of kefir, uh, but most of the, all the kefir you buy in the grocery store is junk. Uh, if you make your own kefir at home, either with uh, cream or with water. Either, there's different ways to do it. I would highly recommend you make kefir with either goat's milk or sheep's milk or camel milk, depending on where in the world you live. Uh, try not to make it with cow's milk unless you can, you know, you have no other option. But I, if you make it at home, I think it's probably pretty decent as long as it's full fat. But if you buy kefir in the grocery, it's junk. Let's see what's going on here. Did I already get this one? Yep, I already got that one. Let's see, guys. Now's the time. Keep your questions as short as you can while including all relevant information. I'm going to try to answer a bunch of these. Cecile says, where can I find the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs t-shirts? Uh, there's a link down in the show notes. That it's shopphd.com. And uh, you can get proper human diet t-shirts or you can get beef, butter, bacon, and egg t-shirts there. And it's the, the, the material is excellent quality. The Nisha says the t-shirts are very, very soft. They have t-shirts, tanks, hoodies, and cropped hoodies currently. And they're working on getting coffee mugs and hats that say PhD in beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Mark says... Um, six months carnivore ketovore, skin was all clear, weight was melting off, but suddenly skin problems are back and weight loss has stopped. What gives? Something in your diet may have changed, Mark, uh, that you thought was okay. Go back and look at your diet with fresh eyes. Also, make sure you haven't had a big spike in stress levels because that will 100% do this. It could be stress at home, stress at work. It could be physical stress or psychic stress, mental stress. Um or even soul stress, I guess, any stress to your system. So you may have had an injury. Uh, you may have had some drama at work or at home. That's going to give you your symptoms back, but it's only temporary, Mark. You hang in there and it's going to go away and stay away. Seeking Harmony says, NPR just had an article today that said that people who had COVID are more likely to develop diabetes within six months. Can you do more research on that? I actually have been researching this. And so one of the standard treatments for um, 
the virus when you're an inpatient is high doses of intravenous steroids. And that can, if you're right on the brink of diabetes, that can push you over into type 2 diabetes, 100%. Um, very many people, millions of people in the United States, and probably tens of millions of people around the world are pre-diabetic, but their doctors never check the lab work. So the doctor doesn't know they're pre-diabetic, nor does the patient know they're pre-diabetic. So when this pre-diabetic person catches COVID, a bad case, and they're going to have a bad case because they're pre-diabetic and probably have other um, uh, risk factors for metabolic syndrome. After a few days in the hospital, that pre-diabetes with all the IV steroids is now turned into type 2 diabetes. Uh, and I don't. there might be something about this virus in particular that's increasing your risk of developing type 2, but everybody, every doctor knows that, that high doses of intravenous steroids will make you into a temporary type 2 diabetic, but you can reverse this. Thanks for the super chat, Seeking Harmony. Diane says, I am 60 and an endomorph. Uh, there's, uh, so there's mesomorph, ectomorph, and endomorph, right? So the, uh, these are three classical body styles. There's not really a lot of research that supports that these are actually things, but uh, a mesomorph is more muscular with a thin waist. A ectomorph is just super skinny. And an indoor more, endomorph is kind of more fluffy. So when I was a young man in my 20s, I was an ectomorph. I couldn't, I couldn't gain muscle or fat. But then about the age of 35, I turned into an endomorph. Uh, Diane says, do you recommend breaking keto for one day a week to keep my metabolism going? Uh, Diane, are you under the false impression that doing keto in some way messes up your metabolism or stops your metabolism? Because it doesn't. It actually optimizes your metabolic rate. So I would if if you if you have metabolic syndrome or some other metabolic problem, I would recommend doing keto full time. That's how you're going to optimize your metabolism, not by taking a break from the very thing that's going to help your metabolism. Good question. Thank you for that. All right, Jeremy's girlfriend. Where's Jeremy? Will ketosis make my kidney stones active and make them past? Been having that feeling, low back pain. So what very many people find on, on a keto diet or ketovore or carnivore is that pre-existing kidney stones that they may already have in their kidneys shrink and get smaller. Now that's good, but uh, if a kidney stone in your kidney or in the renal pelvis is big enough, it can't get through the ureter. So it won't, you won't pass it. So you don't have any pain. You don't even know it's there. But when it gets small enough to get into your ureter, that's the tube that goes from your kidney to your bladder, then you know it because it hurts like a mofo. It's a 10 out of 10, uh, Jeremy's girlfriend. Uh, it's one of the three things that women have told me are worse than natural childbirth is a kidney stone. And so even though keto is, is shrinking your kidney stones and getting rid of them, when the kidney stone gets small enough and gets into your ureter, then you have a, a, a kidney stone attack. And many doctors who aren't knowledgeable about what's going on, the physiology behind this, they'll say keto gave you a kidney stone. But what in reality was happening is keto was shrinking your kidney stones and shrinking enough that it could get into your ureter, which means you're going to pass it eventually, but it's, going to, it's not going to be a fun few days until you pass it. So you may be trying to pass a very small one, uh, Jeremy's girlfriend, and that may be that, that feeling that you're having. If that pain continues to worsen, then definitely see your doctor. Oh, man, where am I at? I'm lost. Let's see. Rob, I have heard you mention before the recommended lab work uh, for keto carnivore. Where can I find this? So uh, my good friend and I, Kim Howerton, we wrote a book called Common Sense Labs, which I'm about to release to my patrons on patreon.com. All of my $5 and up patrons are going to get a free PDF copy of the book. And so I'm going to probably send that out this evening or in the morning to my five dollar and up patrons. But uh, if you don't want to, if you don't want the, to to become a patron, then in a few weeks the book's going to be for sale. I'd say in two weeks. That's got a list of all the lab work that you need, and it's not just for people on keto carnivore. It's for all humans on the planet. When you get to about 30, 35 years of age, there's a set of labs that you need to have checked every year 
to monitor your metabolic health. And you can either go to your doctor and say, hey, please order these for me. Or you can go to a website like True Health Labs or Own Your Labs. Uh, Dave Feldman's got a lab company now where he, he'll, he'll check any labs you want checked. But once a year after the age of 30, 35, 40, somewhere in there, you need to start checking these once a year so that you have a you have your finger on the pulse of your metabolic health. So nothing is nothing sneaks up on you. But that's how you can get access to that, Rob, if you want it. All right. David says, does uh, G6PD deficiency affect results of keto carnivore? No, it does not. Uh, anybody with a genetic defect like that absolutely, absolutely needs to eat a proper human diet. OK, uh, people with no genetic defects who have great metabolism, they might be able to skate by eating a junk diet for a few decades, but it's eventually going to catch up with them. But any of you guys with a metabolic defect like uh, G6PD, you today or in the morning, you need to start a proper human diet to protect all of your internal organs. <sighs> wow. Hold still. Uh, so I can click on you. Okay, here we go. Oh my, okay. YouTube, this needs to be fixed. I, I can't, I can't answer super chats if they're going by crazy fast. Okay, here we go. Uh, Loxie Ann, thank you, Dr. Barry. Oh, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, Kimberly, can beef, butter, bacon, and eggs be done with some processed meats like breakfast sausage, smoked sausage, and cheaper eggs with an occasional ribeye or other pure meats added in? 100%. Here's the rule. Here's the proper human diet rule. Okay. Here's the beef, butter, bacon, and egg rule. Eat the best quality meat that you can afford. If all you can afford right now is Vienna sausage and bologna and hot dogs, that's 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 a thousand times better than eating the processed carbs. Okay. Once you can afford to do better, then do better because grass-fed, grass-finished, panda massage meat is about three to six percent better for you three to 6%, but it usually costs two or three times as much. So eat the best quality meat that you personally can afford. I eat sausage all the time. I eat bacon all the time. I eat bologna all the time. Uh, I, I love that stuff. Okay. And I have not seen any meaningful research that scares me away from it. Eat the meat you can afford, but definitely eat your meat. Michelle, Five weeks carnivore going on week six. I've gained four pounds, uh, steak, butter, liver, salt, eggs. I'm 52 years old. I don't cheat ever. I'm discouraged. Don't be discouraged, Michelle. This is very common in, in women that they will gain somewhere between three and 10 pounds when they first start a carnivore diet. The vast majority of this is that you're putting on muscle, you're developing more connective tissue, and you're making stronger bones, which weigh more. Okay. You're not putting on more fat, I guarantee you. And the way you'll know this is that when you put on your blue jeans, they fit a little better than they did before you gained the four pounds. So you've probably lost 10 pounds of fat and you've put on 14 pounds of lean tissue, which would be muscle, tendons, cartilage, connective tissue, fascia, all that's getting stronger. And your bones are getting stronger and more dense. <coughs> the scale doesn't know the difference between fat and bone. OK, they both to the scale, they look the same. And so don't worry about your weight on the scale. Take all your measurements with a tailor's tape and you'll notice the body recomposition that's going on and you'll be very. Discouraged. Don't be sad. That's a good thing. Glenn says TRT, testosterone, cypionate injection or bioidentical pellets. What's better? So I think the bioidentical pellets or the bioidentical cream that you rub on your skin, it's more bioidentical. Right. So your body's going to know what to do with it. Now, testosterone cypionate is pretty much bioidentical, but they they've they've done something. They put it in an oil so that it's released slowly in your body. So a, a, an injection of that last two weeks. So really, the patent is not on a unique fake testosterone molecule. It's really on the delivery mechanism. So I think the testosterone cypionate, that's pretty darn good. And it's usually a little cheaper to do it that way. Thank you, Glenn. Uh, Penelope, I'm an organic grass-fed carnivore, but I still love organic stevia in my espresso. Am I a cheater? I, I wouldn't call you a cheater, Penelope. If you're making moving toward your goals and you feel great, keep using your stevia. I don't think it's a big deal. Now, for some of us, 
stevia is a big deal. We need to get all the sweeteners out of our mouth when we're eating a carnivore diet. Uh, I recommend everybody, if they're going to do the beef, butter, bacon, and eggs 90-day challenge, that you get the sweeteners, all the sweeteners out of your mouth for 90 days because I want you to have the best results you can have. And then at the end of that 90 days, you can try say, I'm going to have a little, I'm going to have a little stevia and see what happens. And that way it's a great experiment that you can do at home that tells you, yay or nay, should you avoid it or not? Thank you, Loxie, for the super chat. DWJ started keto in early February. In early March, after taking clindamycin, I developed C. diff. Yep. Could the change in my diet have been a contributing factor? Thanks. No DWJ, the clindamycin, which is a super strong antibiotic. It decimated all the good bacteria in your gut, and it gave the C. diff a chance to jump on board and take over. So uh, once you have corrected this, Keep eating uh, a keto diet, a meat heavy, egg heavy keto diet, and you'll never have you'll never have an attack of C diff again. What people don't realize is that C diff is a normal bacteria that most of us have in our colon all the time. You're like, wait, what? Yeah, you got C diff right now, but but it's only when you destroy all the other good bacteria does C diff have a chance to take over. And that's when you have a C. diff infection and that's when you get really sick. OK, so if a if, if hundred of you guys went to the doctor and you feel perfectly fine, no diarrhea, no gut problems. And you said, hey, check me for C. diff. About 70 percent of you guys are going to test positive for C. diff. And if a doctor doesn't know better, they're going to freak out and be like, oh, my God, we've got to treat you. You've got C. diff. And you could say, no, doctor, actually, 70 percent of, of adults have C. diff. They're just colonized. It's no big deal. And I don't have any symptoms. So why would you want to treat that? It's just normal. So, yeah, don't worry about the CDF. Once you fix it, you keep eating your meat and you'll be fine. Steven, I am a 43-year-old male, three weeks on carnivore. Uh, first week, I lost 10 pounds. The weight loss is stalled. I have 70 pounds to lose. I eat steak for lunch and four eggs for dinner. Muscles have also lost some strength. What's going on? Uh, you might not be getting enough electrolytes currently, Steve. You might not be getting enough salt in your diet. It sounds to me like you're just not eating enough food, Stephen. Uh, depending on your height and weight, uh, typically when I eat uh, in a day, I will eat um, two 12-ounce ribeyes and anywhere from four to eight eggs, usually six, six to ten eggs. Uh, so I'm afraid you're just not eating enough total food. Uh, just because you're trying to lose weight does not mean you need to portion control or calorie count. You do not do that on, on a carnivore diet. You eat until you cannot eat another bite. Okay. Salt your meat to taste, salt your eggs to taste, make sure you're getting plenty of electrolytes and make sure you're getting enough fat. Okay. A lot of people think that carnivore is a high protein, low fat diet. It's not, it's not. For most of us, we need a high fat, adequate protein carnivore. That's that's how I eat. I add, I add butter to everything. I had two big ribeyes today. I put a big hunk of butter on both of them, and I ate every bit of the fat and gristle that came with the steak. I didn't trim any of that off. I didn't throw any of that away, nor should you. Abby, thanks for all the help. You've been a great resource through my carnivore journey. I'm no longer concerned about eating fat. After 30 days, I have felt more like myself. Ex exactly. You, guys, your brain needs fat. It needs it needs a good supply of animal fat. OK, that's the fat that your body knows what to do with. I definitely would tell you to avoid all of the vegetable seed oils. But what many people find when they go carnivore is that they find out that the avocado oil, the olive oil, the coconut oil wasn't really their friend. Butter, lard, ghee, beef tallow. Those are the fats that human beings have been eating for three million years. And those are the fats you need to focus on. Well done, Abby. And Sanity. Thanks for the super chat. And Sanity. CJ says, Dr. Barry, can you give me some ammo info to use when talking to my peeps about why animal fat is not bad for you and perhaps the relationship uh, to inheriting Alzheimer's? Okay, so uh, let's think about this, CJ. Just to ask your peeps. Hey, let's play a, a mind game. OK, let's pretend that we got into a time machine and went back in time a hundred thousand years. OK. What fats did we have to eat? Was there any canola oil? 
Nope. We've only been eating canola oil for a few decades. Was there any cottonseed oil or uh, soybean oil or peanut oil or sunflower or safflower 100,000 years ago? Mm -mm. No, there was none of that. None of that. That stuff's only been eaten by humans for a few decades. What was the fat? Uh, if you if you found a grove of avocado trees, I guess you could have some avocado oil. If you if there were coconut trees around, you could have some coconut oil. If there were olive trees, you could have olive oil. Yeah. But what was the majority of the fat that we ate? It was animal fat from megafauna. Megafauna is big, fatty animals. OK, people don't realize that before about 13000 years ago, all the continents on the world, and I do mean all the continents, were covered with giant horses, camels, elephants, mastodons, um, just every kind of, there, there was a certain kind of armadillo that was as big as a Volkswagen, okay? That's the kind of stuff that humans cut their teeth on. That's the fats that we ate the majority of. And so ask your peeps, CJ, ha have, have humans changed? in the last 100,000 years that now the fat that we ate for the last 3 million years at least, it's now bad for us? What changed exactly? What part of our physiology or biochemistry changed that the fat that we've eaten our entire existence on this planet is now bad for us? Just as a, as a common sense thing, it's an extraordinary claim to say, oh, you need to eat plant fats instead of animal fats because that's not something humans have ever done except for about the last 100 years. So do you understand that's an extraordinary claim? And anytime somebody makes an extraordinary claim, what do they need to back it up? Extraordinary evidence. And your peeps don't got that, I promise you, okay? So that should be the end of the discussion. They'll probably won't, still won't agree with you, but they won't have an answer. Thanks. Whoa. Uh, thanks, Lou Castley, for the super chat. Done, says in ketosis for a while and enjoying the benefit of no hunger and no sugar cravings. Went a little too long today before eating and had low blood sugar issues. What is a good way to get blood sugar up without sugar? So Tiff, how do you know you had low blood sugar? Did you check a finger stick? Because there are many, many things that'll make you have the symptoms of low blood sugar and you have a perfectly normal blood sugar. Uh, typically on a ketogenic diet, you don't have low blood sugar anymore unless you're still injecting insulin or you're taking one of the type 2 diabetic medications that works by increasing your insulin? Good question. Whoa. Got that one. Sherry, why would cream cheese cause me to become extremely sleepy about 10 to 15 minutes after eating? I occasionally use it as a spread on hamburger or as a treat and have noticed this trend when I do. So, Sherry, I'm kind of the same way. I freaking love cream cheese. Love it. I love ricotta. I love cottage cheese. I love all that. But if I eat it, I have a little reaction to... Nisha, come get your cat, please. Loki the cat wants outside. Mommy's going to help you, Loki. Don't worry. So I, I think I, I think that many of us have an insulin spike high enough with the bovine protein in, in dairy products, the, the cow protein. I, it doesn't agree with me, although I love the taste of it. If I eat too much of it, I'll start to gain weight in the middle. And after I eat a, a lot of it, I'll just be like, uh. remember the old way you felt when you'd eat too many carbs and you're like, I just want to take a nap. Dairy protein does that to me. It makes me feel that way. And I hate that because I freaking love it, but the truth is the truth. I cannot lie. Oh, well, it's really not. It's, yeah. Stephen, I am. Uh, no, we already did that. We already did, Stephen. Already did done. Already did that. Yep, we already did that. Come on, YouTube. Steve, Stephanie, keto for two years, one meal a day, Monday through Friday since January 31st, so about four months, two meals a day on Saturday and Sunday. I'm 58. I feel good, but I can't lose weight. What should I do? Stephanie, you should watch my video on this YouTube channel called The 13 Reasons Why Your Weight Loss Might Stall. There's 13 reasons. Some of them are not your fault. Uh, most of them are not your fault. Some of them are hormonal issues that you need to discuss with your doctor. Uh, watch that video and it'll help you know what's what. 
Tessa, looking to start carnivore, diagnosed with CHF 18 months ago. What do I need to watch out for while moving into carnivore? You need to watch out for eating too many processed carbohydrates, Tessa. There's nothing about a carnivore diet that's bad for your heart. There's nothing about a carnivore diet that's bad for your liver. There's nothing about a carnivore diet that's bad for your kidneys. A carnivore diet is, is on the spectrum of a proper human diet. Humans have eaten carnivore diets for millions of years. It is good for your heart, Tessa, not bad for your heart. Make sure you salt your meat to taste. If your doctor tells you to eat low salt, ask them where's the research that shows that. Frank. Armadillos to Volkswagens. Thanks for all you do, Dr. Barry. And to your subscribers and patrons, thank, thanks for your outstanding questions today. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. Thank you very much. Ashley says, you and Nisha both uh, get super chats today because I love y'all. Oh, Ashley, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Luke Kessley said, do you think mental health issues have something to do with people not eating enough animal fat? Indirectly, yes, I do. Okay. What the, the the majority of mental health issues, and there's actually research to back this up for though for, for you naysayers out there. Schizophrenia responds beautifully to being in ketosis and eating lots of animal fat. Okay. Depression, anxiety, OCD, ADHD. I have ADHD. It's much, much more controlled on carnivore diet. All of these mental health issues get better when you remove the inflammatory high carbohydrate, highly processed sugars, grains, and vegetable seed oils from your diet. Uh, now, some people, their mental health improves even more when they go from keto, which helped it. When they go from keto to ketovore or even carnivore, their mental health gets even better. Uh, if any of you guys are suffering from a mental health issue, I would 100% recommend 90 days of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs and see how much better you get. I think you'll be surprised. All right. Here's one from Ronald. I need someone to look at my thyroid labs and tell me if I need desiccated thyroid medication like armor or not. How do I find a doctor like that? Two ways, Ronald. Uh, I have a YouTube video called How to Find a Low-Carb Keto-Friendly Doctor Near You. In the show notes of that video are six websites that you can put your zip code into uh, wherever you're at in the world, not just in the United States, but all over the world, and it'll tell you the nearest low-carb-friendly doctor. Most low-carb friendly doctors also understand how to treat thyroid properly. If you just like to run your numbers by someone, you can become a patron on my Patreon. There's a link down in the show notes and you can post your thyroid results and we can go over them together. That's one of the many things I do for people in my Patreon community. Steve, hey, doc, have dropped my A1C from 6.3 to 5.3 last January. Boom. Started carnivore May 1. Now A1C is back up to 5.7. No stress. CGM says average blood glucose is 100, uh, 115 over the last 20 days and 103 over the last 30 days. Any idea why A1C is going up? Uh, my guess would be that when you converted from keto to carnivore, you bumped up your protein a lot and you, and you bumped down your fat macro. I, uh, I think, Steve, you're one of the people that need a very high fat, adequate protein carnivore diet. And I think once you bump up the fat, you'll notice that your A1C, which is one tenth of, of a point above normal, it'll come right back down uh, to under 5.7. Diana, I started keto due to cardiovascular disease and ectasia keto chow minerals and had difficulty swallowing. I stopped the minerals and it went away. Could it uh, be too much iodine or just coincidence? Probably coincidence, Diana. Now, the, the daily mineral drops that I designed and, and keto chow makes, they, are, they don't taste good. They are very minerally, very salty, uh, very briny, okay? And a lot of people just can't tolerate taking the full dose. And so they'll spread the dose out over the course of the day. And I actually have, have it in a dropper bottle. And every cup of coffee, I'll put 10 drops of, of the mineral drops. And then when I cook a steak, I'll put 10 drops on top of the steak. Uh, when, I, when I drink electrolyte water, I'll put 10 drops in that. And so over the course of the day, I wind up getting a serving, but I'm not trying to slam down that, that full serving because it's, it, I mean, good medicine tastes bad, 
Okay, it, it does not taste pleasant. They don't put any sweetener. They don't put any flavoring in it. It's just the minerals, and it tastes very minerally, and that's probably what's going on, Diana. Leilani, if I go full carnivore, can I quit all supplements? I take vitamin D and K, sea kelp, potassium, magnesium, zinc, omega, Colase, iodine, and B12. So you can probably stop everything except for the vitamin D, depending on where you live in, in the world, Leilani, and how much sun exposure you get. Because you can live in the Sahara Desert, and if you stay indoors all day and never go in the sun, you still need vitamin D. But I would encourage all you guys to get out in the sun every day with your shirt off and get some sun. That's going to help you make all kinds of vitamin D. It's also going to help you make nitric oxide, and it probably helps you make other things that we just haven't discovered yet. Uh, the sea kelp is mainly for iodine, but you also have iodine as well. You're definitely not going to need the, the B12. Uh, you may or may not need an, an electrolyte uh, help for the potassium magnesium. The meat is full of zinc. If you eat fatty meat and you watch my YouTube video about omega-3 rich foods, you're going to get all the omega-3 that you need. The colase, you're definitely not going to need anymore. Uh, so the vitamin D, maybe iodine, probably, and the rest of them you're going to get from the meat. Good question, Leilani. Thank you. All right. Who's next? Mary Williams Boyer. I do not eat low fat, strict carnivore. I do not eat low, low fat, strict carnivore for three and a half months. And for the first time in my life, I have not had a monthly cycle. I don't know, Mary Williams. That's a kind of a double negative. I'm not sure how to interpret your question. I do not eat low fat, strict carnivore. So if you're telling me that you're eating very low fat carnivore, uh, that's probably why you lost your cycle. You're not eating enough healthy animal fat. If that's what you meant. I hope, I hope it is. All right. Nathan, hi, I just recently started a low carb, almost carnivore diet, but I have a friend that says complex carbs are still good for you. Is there a difference between regular carbs and complex carbs? Are they better? So complex carbs are carbs. They are slightly less bad than simple carbs. So simple carbs would be something you find in a jelly donut. That's just full of simple carbs, right? Um, complex carbs would be something that you find in whole wheat bread, Right. So it's, it's going to have fiber. And uh, a lot of people think that the complex carbs are somehow magically better. They're just slightly less bad. OK. And for most of us who fatten easily, who tend to have higher blood sugars easy, the complex carbs are going to spike your blood sugar just as quickly. And if you don't, any of you guys don't believe me, eat a couple of slices of whole wheat bread and check your blood sugar 30 minutes later. And you'll be like, oh, OK, I guess. They weren't that complex after all. Okay. Mike, love your advice, Dr. Barry. What really helped for me was getting a $30 glucometer and check where I am with diet and its impact. And yeah, and so any of you guys, if you're still on the fence about complex carbs, go to the pharmacy and spend 30, 40, 50 bucks for a glucometer. Eat those complex carbs and then check your blood sugar 30 minutes later. Check your blood sugar again an hour later and you'll be like, okay. So, I, yeah, and this is also a great experiment for people who still think bananas are healthy. Eat a big fat banana, check your blood sugar in 30 minutes. Eat a big bowl of steel cut whole oats, not the, the instant, but the real stuff that you got to cook for three days. Wait 30 minutes, check your blood sugar, and then you'll understand oats are not a health food. Oats are a starvation food. Oats are good for feeding prisoners and slaves. And, and, and the poor folks that you really don't care about their health. You just want to keep them from starving to death. Okay. Good questions. Good questions. Thanks for sharing this video, Natalie Stone. You are a, a, indeed a sweetheart. Let's see. Let's get some more questions. You guys are answering, asking some great questions. Uh, Maria says, how do you reach ketosis with intermittent fasting? Maria, it's easy. You just don't eat. And after a few hours, you will be in ketosis. The longer you fast, the deeper your ketosis will be. It's literally that simple. You don't have to do anything magical. You don't have to take, uh, you don't have to eat any fasting bars. Have you guys seen this? There's a company selling fasting snack bars. 
It's like, wait, what? Yeah. All you got to do is just not eat and you will go into ketosis, Maria. It's super easy. Oh, here's a question. Oh, wait a minute. Where'd it go? Dang it. Thanks for the super chat, Jim. Jim Barrett's helping the cause. Here we go. Okay. Brad says, does fermenting apple cider vinegar or uh, kombucha have a positive effect on beef, butter, bacon, and eggs? Um, my good friend, Paul Saladino, wrote a book called The Carnivore Code. And I don't agree with Paul on everything that he says these days. But in his book, he breaks down exactly the truth about fermented plant foods. The reason that our ancestors fermented the plant foods was not because that unlocked some secret magical benefit. It's because it broke down the plant toxins that otherwise would lead to inflammation. Okay. So if you're, if you're insistent that you're going to eat plants, then it, for especially some of them, it's much preferable if you ferment them. Okay. But I would say if you have problems eating plants, then don't eat plants. But there's nothing magical in the fermented things that make them magically good for you. Well, the reason our ancestors fermented them was to make them less inflammatory. To make, In some cases, to make them edible at all. Okay. Uh, the majority of soybean that was eaten uh, centuries ago in, in China, in that area of the, of the world, they fermented it. They wouldn't eat it unless it was fermented. They knew better back then. But now we think, oh, no, uh, tofu, you know, eat your tofu. That's fine. But if that, if it's not fermented, I would never, ever eat a soy product, a soy food, if it were not fermented. They knew. They knew better back then, but we've forgotten currently. Nathan says, hi, I just recently started a low carb. Oh, no, I already did, Nathan, didn't we? Sorry. Okay, that popped up. Thanks, YouTube, for falsely popping that up. All right, let's see. Yeah, and to, and to preserve the food. That's right, Future Breeze, you're right. So they did it to break down the inflammatory plant toxins, and they did it to preserve the food for longer. That's, that's the only reason you ferment stuff. There is no magic released when you ferment plants. Uh, most plants have developed poisons in them. Some plants, like um, poison hemlock, will kill you dead as a hammer. Some plants like castor beans, they will kill you dead. Other plants are more subtle. They don't kill you dead. They just cause inflammation in your joints, in your gut, your skin, uh, in your brain. And that's how they try to deter you from eating their seeds and eating their babies. Uh, Gloria says, I'm a nurse and I was taught that it was bad for your body to be in ketosis. Yeah, Gloria, lots of doctors and nurses were taught this incorrectly. And I actually have a YouTube video I made probably three years ago, four years ago, maybe, about the difference between being in healthy ketosis and ketoacidosis, because that's what you're really thinking about, Gloria, is ketoacidosis. Very unhealthy. It'll kill you dead as a hammer. But ketosis is a, is a natural, normal, healthy state to be in. It means you're burning fat for fuel. Good question. Good question. You guys are on it today. Oh, let's see. Low carb, low drama says, should a hospitalized patient with fourth uh, stage four glioblastoma brain cancer consume sugars and carbs? I mean, not if they want to live as long as they, they possibly can. All sugars, all cancers, all cancers without exception, love sugar, okay? When doctors are doing a PET scan to look for cancer in your body, they use sugar to find the cancer. That's how they find it. They don't use ketones. They don't use protein or fat. They use sugar to find the cancer in your body. Glioblastoma is notorious, notoriously a sugar lover. Uh, but now if this is going to if this is going to cause some kind of family argument and, and stress out the patient, you may not want to go there. But, yeah, if, if I had a friend with glioblastoma, I would literally go in the hospital and slap the tray onto the floor and say, I'll I'll bring you back some real food that will actually help your body fight this. Good question. Mitchell. Hey, Dr. Barry, 10 months on keto and down 85 pounds. I've heard you. I uh, have heard, have you heard anything pro or con 
on taking boron for joint health? Yeah, it, it's a it's a good question. I'm actually working on a YouTube video about boron for bone health. Uh, it looks like that you need a tiny, tiny amount of boron for optimal bone health. Maybe joint health, but definitely for bone health. Uh, but you don't want to get too much boron. So I'm working on a video about that right now. Good question. See, it's doing that thing again. Dr. Barry, I have sarcoidosis. Will keto help? Jim Barrett says. Uh, yeah, 100%. Any autoimmune condition is going to become less severe, and you're going to have less frequent flare-ups um, with a proper human diet. Keto, ketovore, carnivore. I actually have one of one of my uh, patrons you know, on Patreon has sarcoid, sarcoidosis, and she hasn't had a single flare up in years of eating a ketogenic diet. Good questions, guys. Zopibidid. I started carnivore and got blood work one week into the diet. Blood work showed very high ferritin, so a week of carnivore is not going to cause that to start with. Uh, but having an elevated ferritin does not mean that you have iron overload. It does not mean you have hemochromatosis. You have the doctor check for hemochromatosis. There's a long list of things that can cause elevated ferritin and eating lots of healthy fatty meat ain't one of those things. So keep enjoying your, your meat. Okay. That's not what caused that. Angela Palmer trying to help out Sonny Helms said his two super chats got skipped over. Dang it, Sonny, I didn't see them. Um, Kevin, will you, Kevin or Mitzi, will you, um, will you type, uh, cut and paste his uh, super chat into the chat box? I'll try to watch for your names. Aristotle 3 says, how many blood ketones is too many? Is there a danger of ketoacidosis? for a non-type 1 diabetic who eats less than 20 grams of carbs per day? So this is a good question. I'm going to take the second part first. Is there a danger of ketoacidosis for a non-type 1 diabetic who eats less than 20 grams of carbs a day? No, there is a 0% chance that you will ever develop ketoacidosis from eating a ketogenic diet. It your, your physiology does not work that way. Now, some nurses and doctors and dietitians will say, oh, yes, oh, yes, you might develop. But that's they, that. what that does is reveal to you that they have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to this part of human physiology. OK, that is impossible. It does not work that way. So how many blood ketones are too many? Uh, that that's that's up for debate. Um, I'd say as long as your ketone levels that you check in the blood, not in not on a urine uh, pee strip, is is under ten, you have literally zero things to worry about. Keep enjoying your fatty meat and your keto diet. Response Digital Media says thank thanks to you. I've been keto carnivore for five years, previously borderline pre-diabetic. I feel great now. Lately, got a higher BP in the right arm, primarily recommended. My primary doctor recommended a calcium test. I got a 550 score. Could high score be from past life? Yeah, 100%. The, the high coronary artery calcium score is from your decades of a shitty diet in the past. That's what caused the, the calcifications. If those calcifications are... Um, stable, then they're, they're no danger to you. They're nothing, no concern to you. Uh, keep a close eye on your blood pressure being different in the right arm versus the left arm. That could be a sign of uh, arterial issues. If that continues, go see your doctor and say, hey, do I need to see a vascular specialist? Because my blood pressure in my right arm and left arm are substantially different. Now, if it's one or two uh, millimeters of mercury, that's, that's, that's normal. But if it's, if it's five or 10 or 15 or 20 millimeters of mercury different, go see your doctor about that. Not caused by the diet, but can be caused by some vascular issues. Thanks, Wayne, for the super chat. Let me see if, um, <coughs> let me see if Kevin or Mitzi found that super chat that I missed. Um, no. I don't see an answer yet. Maybe they maybe they can find his his uh, super chat and cut and paste it for me. Ruth says, "Do you recommend using a glucose or a ketone meter? And is it a prick into your arm that stays there?" 
So a glucose or ketone meter, you can get one that just you you prick your finger with a tiny needle and get a drop of blood. You can do it that way. Or for just your blood sugar, you can do a continuous glucose monitor that actually stays under your skin for two weeks at a time. Uh, but so you can do a prick of blood or you can do um, the CGM. That's that's the really the two best ways uh, that you can do it. William says, exactly how do I become a patron? Where do I find your Patreon chat? So there's a link for my Patreon down in the show notes of this video. It's a super quick sign up. And then you've got access to all the extra stuff. And so on my Patreon, I do uh, live Q&As just like this. But instead of 2,100 people asking questions, there's 100 people or 50 people or 150 people. So I'm able to answer uh, usually all the questions that people have and answer them in much greater detail. And you're in a private protected community where not everybody in the world is seeing your question. Just people, and, and we call it our tribe because uh, literally it feels like a family reunion on Patreon because the people there are so supportive of each other. They help each other. They reach out to each other. We have patrons who meet for lunch now. They're friends. They, they text with each other and kind of hold each other accountable. It's a really great community. I really love that we started that. John says, I'm on a statin as part of my diabetes treatment, but after I started taking them, neuropathy started. Never had issues before the statin. I stopped and it went away. I know the diabetes didn't help, but my doctor doesn't believe me. Well, John, your doctor's wrong. Uh, statins can absolutely worsen neuropathy. And so if you were just right on the borderline of developing neuropathy because of your diabetes, type 2 diabetes or type 1, the statin pushed you over the edge and cause the neuropathy to rear its ugly head. And when you stop the, the statin, the neuropathy went back. That doesn't mean that you're never going to develop neuropathy again. You've got to get your A1C down to under 5.7, John, and you're going to do that by eating a proper human diet, keto, ketovore, carnivore. Okay, that's how you're going to do that. But yeah, statins 100% will cause neuropathy and a long list of other problems. I've got several videos on this channel. If any of you guys want to know just all the bad things that taking a statin will do to you. Thanks for the super chat, John. Uh, Joseph, cirrhotic liver. A friend was told not to eat red meat because of her cirrhotic liver. True or false? False. Um, if, if she has complete liver failure, then she's basically not going to be able to eat anything because her liver can't process the food anymore and, and get the toxins out and tag the toxins so her kidneys can remove the toxins. Uh, but if she still has some remaining liver function, she needs to eat as low carb as she possibly can. Absolutely no sugar, no grains, no vegetable seed oils, no highly processed high carb crap at all. OK, and so that's going to mean she's going to eat some meat and eggs because there's only so many things to eat. Right. Meat and eggs are good for all human beings, even human beings with cirrhosis. Thanks, Wayne, for the super chat. Okay, let's see if they, uh, this is Sonny's, Paola says, this is Sonny's question, but then you didn't, oh, Sonny Helms, I'm only eating once a day, a uh, half pound of bacon and two eggs, or one burger or steak patty with two eggs, not hungry after that, taking a supplement because the low intake is concerning. Um... Okay, well, Sonny, it depends on how much body fat you've got. You've got to burn. How much? How much? How much overweight are you? If you're, if you have fifty or more pounds of fat to lose, then eating what you're eating is fine because your body is eating your own fat, and it's eating the protein that the fat is locked up in. Now, your body's not going to eat your muscles. Your body's not an idiot. Your fat it doesn't just float in space. It's locked up in in fibrin and connectin. Uh, and other connective tissue, okay? And when you burn the fat, then your body breaks down that connective tissue and you use that for protein. But now if you're normal normal body weight and you're just eating that much, that's not enough food. Uh, you may need to go see your doctor and see why you don't have much of an appetite. There are a long list of medical problems that can make you lose your appetite. But I suspect you've got a lot of body fat to burn. If so, this is fine. Because you're you're actually your macros, your true macros are actually much higher when you count the fat of your body that you're burning, 
and you count the protein that was locking up the fat that is now released that your body can use elsewhere. Good question. Sorry I missed that in the super chat. Oh, I got that one. Thanks, Wayne. Thanks, Mitchell. All right, let's see. What else we got here? Um, Sonny says, yeah, I need to lose 30 pounds. So, Sonny, every time you burn an ounce of fat, right? What What is an ounce of fat? What do you got? Okay, Beckett wants to say hi. This is my two-and-a-half-year-old ketovore baby. Come up here and say hi to everybody. Oh, good bird. Excellent. That's the way to start it. Good job. Can you tell them how old you are? How old are you? Two. Two? And what's your favorite food? Meat. <laughs> Do you like chicken eggs or quail eggs better? Quail eggs, eggs are better. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, what else can I ask this baby? Ask him what, what you do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> You're not helping me work. I know what I'll do. I'll tickle this foot right here. That's what you get for acting up. You better act right. What's your favorite song? What's your favorite song? Your baby. What? Hush, little baby. Oh, you know that's that? What he sings to Bonnie. Do you know that song? Let me hear you sing it. <laughs> you can't sing it right now? Hey, what's on your shirt? What are all these things? Excavators. What? Excavators? He loves excavators and bulldozers. Yeah, he's he's had a little, I don't know if it's allergies from pollen or what. Okay, tell everybody bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Say, see you later. See you later. Say, love you, mean it. <laughs> okay, Beckett's done his work for the day. Very good job, baby. Uh, IQO4, IKO4, down 14 pounds, and my pants are loose after two weeks. Sticking to strict carnivore and enjoying it. That's the way to do it. Hey, uh, you remember Butter Bob said butter will make your pants fall off? Yeah, carnivore will make your pants fall off too in more ways than one. Wayne says, I'm a 66-year-old, never had a problem with any dairy, how can I tell if it's inflammatory to me? Good question. So I think there's probably a few people that dairy protein doesn't bother them much. And the way to, the only way really to tell Wayne is to just do a 30 day challenge where you, the only dairy that you eat is butter or ghee because they're pure fat. There's no protein. There's no carbs, no lactose. And then after that 30 days, your system's going to be, have no dairy, then have a, a big serving of cream cheese or cottage cheese or whatever your favorite dairy is. And if it causes inflammation, you, my friend, will know it. Your body will let you know, and then you'll know for sure. But if you don't have any noticeable reaction, then maybe you're one of the few people who I would say they're lucky because I freaking love dairy. I wish I could eat it and not have reaction. My reaction is, is my belly swells up with fat if I eat too much, too much dairy. That's how you know, Wayne. Uh, Jack Kay. Hi, Dr. Barry. I have borderline high blood pressure and take verapamil and I get leg cramps. I drink electrolytes, but it's not helping me. Any suggestions on lowering my blood pressure naturally without meds? Yeah. Cut the carbohydrates. When you cut the carbohydrates, your insulin level is going to go back down to low normal. And that's going to help you pee off somewhere between three and 20 pounds of unhealthy fluid that you're currently holding because of your chronic hyperinsulinemia. When that happens, your blood pressure is going to come down. Now, for the vast majority of people eating a proper human diet, it comes back down to normal. Some people, it'll stay just a smidge high and they'll have to take one little low dose pill a day for the blood pressure. But the vast majority of people, their blood pressure comes back to normal within a month or two or three. I've got YouTube videos about high blood pressure and all the things I recommend to reverse it and keep it going. Joy, I weigh 160. So how much fat and what kind of fat would I eat? Where would I get it if my carnivore meat doesn't have enough? So, Joy, you're going to eat fatty meat until you're comfortably stuffed and can't eat another bite. Meat and eggs with the fat still attached. So eggs with the yolk. And when you eat fat, if you buy a ground beef, for example, buy the 70-30. Don't buy the 80-20 or the 85-15. Buy the 70-30. That way you know you're getting more fat. Uh, if you do have a lean cut of meat, put some butter on it or cook it in butter or cook it in bacon grease, which makes everything taste divine. 
And that way you're getting more fat with your protein. But the way to know how much, everybody wants to know macros. They want to know how many ounces. You don't have to worry about that. Your body is designed to tell you when you've eaten enough if what you're eating is proper human food. Now, if you're eating high carbohydrate, high late processed bullshit, your body can't give you a, a satiety signal. That's why uh, even the, the potato chip companies brag about it. Can't eat just one because they've, they've literally engineered it to hit your bliss point so that you never, ever get full. But if you're eating fatty meat and eggs with the yolk, after a certain amount, your body's going to say, that's it, Joy, no more. I'm done. That's how you know that you've eaten enough. It's kind of cool how your body works, just like you're breathing right now, Joy. Are you counting how many times a minute you breathe? How, you're not? Well, I mean, how do you know you're breathing enough? You don't have to worry about that because your body's got that. How many times did your heart beat the last minute? You don't know? Aren't you monitoring that? I mean, what if it's what if it's not? Oh, wait a minute. Your body doesn't need your help with that, does it? It's got that. Same thing goes for your kidney function, your liver function. It doesn't need any help for you. It just from you. It just needs you to get out of its way. Stop poisoning it with the slow poison of the standard American diet and eat real human food and eat real human food until you're comfortably stuffed and then stop eating. That's literally how complicated this is. If you'll let your body do its job and stop inflaming it and stop slowly poisoning it. It's just that easy, Joy, I promise. Swine dog, 712. I've been eating keto, no sugar, no grains, for more than five years. I'm afraid if I get my blood work done by a regular doctor, they'll try to get me started on a statin. How do I find a good doctor who understands keto? Well, first of all, you guys, if you go to your doctor and your doctor checks your, your lipid panel and says, oh, your total cholesterol is high, you need to take a statin. There's a magic word that you can say that will stop the, all that. You say, no. What else, doc? That's it. That's all you got to do. When you go to your doctor or when you're in the hospital, you're not under arrest. You still are a free human with rights. You have the, you have the right to choose what goes in your body. And if you don't want to take a statin, just tell your doctor no, and that's the end of the conversation. Okay? But also I have a video called How to Find a Low-Carb Keto Doctor Near You on this channel. Watch it and put your zip code into the websites down in the show notes and you can find a doctor who's not going to bitch at you every time you go if your total cholesterol is a little high because some doctors are smart enough to know that that doesn't mean anything bad. Good question. What else is going on here? Thanks, uh, Missy, Mitzi and, and Kevin and Paola. These three guys are my moderators for this channel. They have a little blue wrench beside their name. They're answering lots of, of beginner questions. Thank you. Thank you for doing that, guys. John says, I started keto three weeks ago, and I have um, I have acid reflux, and I get heartburn and don't feel well after eating eggs with bacon. Please help. Uh, try just eating the bacon or just eating the eggs. Give your stomach a few weeks to adjust to a keto diet. I used to have the most severe heartburn you can imagine. It was terrible. And, and keto made it 80% better. Carnivore cured it. I haven't taken anything for heartburn. I have not had heartburn in over two years. And uh, John, you can imagine how wonderful that would be to not have any reflux, not have to worry about, oh God, where did I leave my Tums? Where's my Nexium? I don't know and I don't care because I don't need them anymore. And you'll be the same way after a few more weeks. All right. Yeah. Everybody thank the moderators. They're doing a wonderful job in here. Kyle Quad4 says, my wife doesn't believe this diet is healthy. What are some things I can show, tell her? Well, Kyle, I've got over 500 videos on this channel. And I'm not suggesting that you make your wife watch all 500 videos. But what is her particular, particular argument against keto? If it's high fat, I've got videos. And in the show notes of those videos, I've got the research that I based the video on. OK, if it's high cholesterol, I got videos and the research is in the show notes. If it's if it's meat causes cancer, I've got videos. That's bullshit, by the way. Uh, and that, that show the research shows very clearly what I'm saying is true. OK, so don't argue with your wife about this. First of all, lead by quiet example. Reverse all your chronic health issues. If you're overweight, reverse that by eating keto, ketovore, carnivore. And when she sees the change in you, 
she might be less argumentative. I've seen that happen many, many times. Decaf with a teaspoon of goat butter. Very, very tasty. Oh, and 10 drops of the daily minerals. Uh, okay, Lynette says, can I do keto and detox at the same time? Lynette, what the hell do you mean by detox? Okay, did you pay money for a liver detox or a kidney detox or a whole body detox? Please tell me you didn't waste your money. There is no such thing on planet Earth as a detox that you buy from somebody. Okay, if you're drinking green juice or celery juice or some kind of thing that you saw some YouTube influencer talking about to detox your body, that's horseshit. Okay, the, there is only one cleanse, one detox for the human body. That is fasting. There is no other detox. There is no other cleanse. It's all baloney. Okay, it's all based on the, the premise that you should suffer and that you should punish yourself for your past indiscretions because you're a sinner. But that's not true. You're just a human being trying to get by. Okay, if you want to detox your body, cleanse your body, cleanse your liver, your, your kidneys, you fast. Not You don't fast to punish yourself. You fast so that your body has time to, it's a self-cleaning oven. You just got to get out of your body's way, okay? So you 100% can do keto and detox at the, at the same time, okay? So here, here's how you do it. You eat two keto meals in a six-hour feeding window or feasting window. Eat as much as you can, eat to your stuff, comfortably stuff, and then you fast for the other 18 hours of the day. That's your detox. And then the next day, you do the same thing over again. That's how I eat every single day, okay? I eat, I eat uh, a big carnivore meal about 4 p.m., and then sometimes I eat a second carnivore meal at 6 or 7 p.m., sometimes I don't. And then I fast for 20 or 22 hours. For the rest of the for the rest of the day, that's how I live my life every single day, and I feel better now at fifty three than I felt at thirty five. Way better. My my fifty three year old self could go back in time and kick my thirty five year old's ass easy. That's how much healthier and more vigorous and virile and potent and vibrant I am now at fifty three than I was at thirty five when I was eating the standard American junk diet. So, yeah, I, I keto and detox every single day of my life. I already took care of swine dog. Okay, let's see. You guys got questions? Now's the time. I've gone over the hour, but I'm on fire. I'm going to keep, keep it going. Wildflower says you can't find a uh, low carb friendly doctor in the Chicago area. Anybody know a, a, a low carb friendly doctor in the Chicago area? I think that my, my buddy, Dr. Tony Hampton is in the Chicago area. He's a pretty darn good doctor. You might want to Google him. Jerry says, what breaks a fast? Can I have coffee with non-dairy creamer or will that break my fast? So I think for the vast majority of us, Jerry, uh, coffee doesn't break your fast, but the non-dairy creamer 100% is going to break your fast and 100% is going to cause inflammation in your body. It is what's, What is non-dairy creamer? What does that even mean? Have you ever read the ingredients? Perhaps you should. That is crap. Throw that away. If you want to put something in your coffee, put a, a pat of butter, a teaspoon of butter, and, and froth it up with a frother. It's freaking delicious. And the butter's pure fat, right? So carbohydrates raise your insulin very high. That breaks your fast. Protein elevates your insulin in moderate amount. That breaks your fast. Fat barely bumps, barely bumps your, your insulin level at all. And that's why people put fat in their coffee if they're starting to get hungry. I do it because I love the taste of this goat butter. Uh, but if you want to fast longer, you put a little butter in your coffee. That turns off your hunger. You can also put some salt in your coffee. It also tastes delicious, and it'll turn off your hunger, okay? Thistle Moon Farm says, I don't look more than 40. Yeah, well, let me just tell you. Ask my wife. She says, I act about 21, but I'm 53. Sometimes when I see the, the poor vegan doctors on Twitter, I have lots of Twitter fights with them. I, I feel bad for them. 
I mean, they, they don't look healthy. They don't look happy. They look like they're in pain, and they look much older than their chronological age. Sky says, yep, my 70-year-old self can could kick my 35-year-old's butt every day of the week now. Yeah, 100%. And some people say it's aging in reverse. Some people say that, you know, you're turning back the hands of time. But what's really happening is this is this is what a 53-year-old should normally be. When you see a 53-year-old and they're obese and they've got type 2 diabetes and fatty liver and they're depressed and they lay on the couch all day and they've got low testosterone, we see that so often that we think that's normal for a 53 year old, but that ain't normal. Okay. Guarantee you, if we got in our time machine and went back in time a hundred thousand years and you saw a 53 year old back then, you would say yes, sir. Or yes, ma'am to them. Cause they would stomp you as we say here in the South, if you gave them any lip, because they were on their game. They didn't have any of the, the wheat, rice, oats, and corn. They didn't have any of the sugars, the high fructose corn syrup, the agave, the nectar. <clears throat> they didn't have any of that stuff. They had lots of fatty meat every day. They had eggs when they could find them. They ate some veg if they were starving to death. If they found some nuts, they ate some nuts. If they found some berries, they ate some berries. Once a year, they found the honey tree, and they ate the honey. But on a daily basis, they ate the hell out of fatty meat and probably organ meat as well. That's why they were so vigorous so late in age. Thanks, Josh, for the super chat, my friend. Thank you very much. Let's get a few more questions here. I'm feeling it right now. Let's see. Oh, Turbo Kid says... <clears throat> Travis Berry says, is alcohol okay on keto? So let's talk about alcohol, okay? I got a, a YouTube video about al keto-friendly alcohol. So alcohol is poison, okay? And more and more, the medical uh, community is starting to admit this. You know, for a few years, they're like, oh, no, you should drink a glass of red wine for your heart. Well, that's total bullshit. And it turns out now most of that research was made up. Uh, alcohol is bad for you, period. OK, I'm sorry, Travis, if that hurts your heart. All alcohol is bad for you. There is no healthy alcohol. Now, some alcohol is less bad than others. So beer, obviously, is, is often not gluten free and it's full of carbohydrates. So it's, it's basically sugar water. Don't drink beer. Uh, wine, unless you get a very, very dry wine, is going to have too many carbs. Uh, if you must have some alcohol, have some, some, some gin, some vodka, some whiskey, some bourbon, some scotch, uh, one ounce with a sugar-free, carbohydrate-free mixer like club soda or sparkling water. And that, that's the least bad alcohol that you can have. But you still need to drink that very rarely. Um, I'm to the point where I'll have a mixed drink on my birthday, on our anniversary, and maybe, maybe Nisha's birthday too, but literally four or five times a, a year max that's all I drink anymore. And I used to drink quite a bit. I was never an alcoholic, but I really like to drink. And I love the taste of it still, but it's poison. I'm sorry. It just is. It's very, very clear when you look at the physiology of the way the human body breaks down alcohol. It's poison. Emsia Ims says, what's your opinion on psyllium husk supplements with meals? Um, psyllium husk. Think about that. Why not just put some salt, have a sawdust supplement with your meal? Sawdust is rich in fiber and it's the same exact fiber. Literally the same exact fiber is in sawdust as is in psyllium husks. There is no difference. It is cellulose. Okay. So if, if you said, when I said, hey, have a sawdust supplement, if you were like, ooh, gross. Psyllium husk is just as gross and just as dumb as taking a sawdust supplement. They're literally the same molecule. You don't need it. It's a waste of your money. Okay. I'm sorry you wasted your money, but now you know better. Now you can do better and never waste your money again. All right. Nisha's giving me the stink eye. That means I've been on here long enough. I can stay on here all night with you guys. This is awesome. I, I love you guys. Uh, if you didn't get your question answered, go to my Patreon. There's a link in the show notes. Become a patron. I do four extra live Q&As every week in there with only just 50, 100, 150 people listening and asking questions. 
That way you can get your answer, your, your question answered. Okay. That's how you do it. Otherwise, I'll see you Monday night, 7 p.m. right chair for Monday Night Live with my beautiful wife, Nisha, Solace Hyphen Berry, a.k.a. Nisha Loves It. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out of here. Thank you very much.